Hello, and welcome to this presentation, Understanding Switching Mode Power Supplies. In this presentation, we'll provide a short technical introduction to switching mode power supplies and explain how they're used to convert alternating current into direct current. This presentation assumes a general familiarity with linear power supplies. We'll provide a brief review on the next slide, but please see the presentation, Understanding Linear Power Supplies, if you'd like a more detailed introduction to the design and operation of linear power supplies. Let's start with a review of the stages in a linear power supply. AC mains voltage is first stepped down to lower voltage AC using a transformer. This lower voltage AC is then rectified to produce a pulsating positive voltage. A capacitor-based filter then smooths out this pulsating voltage to produce a mostly flat DC output voltage. Optionally, a regulator is used to keep the output voltage constant when the input voltage or load impedance changes. Linear power supplies have a number of advantages. They're easy to design, low cost, and robust. They usually produce a relatively clean output and have very low electromagnetic emissions. The greatest disadvantage of these supplies is, however, their large size and weight, and this is primarily due to the size of the AC main step-down transformer. This becomes a greater issue as the power supply current rating increases. One challenge, therefore, is to find a way of reducing the size of the transformer. The size of transformers decreases as the frequency of operation increases, but AC mains voltage is normally fixed at a relatively low frequency of 50 or 60 Hz. Another disadvantage of linear power supplies is their lack of flexibility. Flexibility here means both the ability to operate on different supply voltages and frequencies, as well as the ability to produce different output voltages. Switching mode power supplies, also called switch mode or switched mode, are the most common solution to these issues. In a switching mode power supply, mains AC is rectified to produce very high voltage DC. This high voltage DC is then chopped into a very high frequency pulse signal by means of some type of switching semiconductor, typically a MOSFET. A transformer is then used to convert this high voltage, high frequency pulse signal into a lower voltage, but still high frequency, pulsed signal. Because the signal is high frequency, we can use a smaller transformer. This lower amplitude pulse signal is then rectified and filtered to produce a constant, non-pulsed DC output. The output voltage is controlled or regulated by varying the duty cycle of the switch or chopper. Let's go through this again graphically. AC mains voltage is first rectified and then filtered to produce high voltage DC. A switch or chopper converts this high voltage DC into a high voltage, high frequency pulsed signal which is then stepped down to a lower voltage level using a transformer. Next, this lower voltage pulsed waveform is rectified and filtered again to produce relatively low voltage DC. A regulator or controller monitors the output DC and maintains the desired output voltage by changing the duty cycle of the signal used to open and close the switch. Note that some switching mode AC to DC supplies also contain additional functional blocks such as an input filter or power factor correction, but we won't be covering these optional sections in this presentation. Now let's look at each of these stages in a bit more detail. In an AC-DC switching mode power supply, the first step is rectifying the AC mains voltage using diodes. This is most often done using a bridge rectifier as shown here. The pulsating output of the rectifier is then filtered or smoothed out using capacitors. The result is a very high voltage, constant DC output. The next step is chopping this high voltage DC into pulses. Most often a MOSFET is used as a switch, although other types of power transistors can also be used. A high frequency pulse signal at the MOSFET gate switches the MOSFET between the on or conducting state and the off or non-conducting state in order to chop the input DC into pulses. The efficiency of a FET operated in this way is very high, since MOSFETs dissipate very little power 
in their on and off states. The switching frequency in most supplies can be on the order of tens of kilohertz all the way up into single digit megahertz. The pulse signal controlling the switch is generated by the regulator, something we'll discuss in just a few minutes. And as we'll discuss later in this presentation, the duty cycle of the pulse signal at the MOSFET gate is what ultimately controls the output voltage of the supply. The high frequency, high voltage output of the switcher is then passed to a transformer, which steps these high voltage pulses down to lower voltage pulses. Recall that higher frequencies decrease both the size of the transformer as well as the size of the filtering capacitors that will be needed in the next stage. And this is what allows switching mode power supplies to be smaller and lighter than comparable linear power supplies. In addition, this transformer also provides electrical isolation between the high side and low side voltages in the supply, which is often important for safety reasons. The step down pulse DC output of the transformer is then rectified to produce non-pulsed constant DC. There are several different ways of doing this, but all involve some combination of diodes, capacitors, and or inductors. Note that because of the relatively high frequency of the switched or chopped DC, the filtering capacitors used in this stage can be considerably smaller than those that are used to rectify lower frequency mains voltage. Let's pause for a moment to discuss a related topic, which is DC to DC conversion. Switching mode power supplies can be used not just for AC to DC conversion, but also for purely DC to DC conversion, that is, for stepping up or stepping down DC voltages. This is, in fact, a very common application of switching mode power supplies. There are three main types of DC to DC converters. Buck converters, which reduce or step down the input voltage. Boost converters, which increase or step up the input voltage. And buck boost converters, which can step voltage either up or down. Note, however, that if no transformer is used, as in the example shown here, there will be no electrical isolation between the input and the output. We don't have time to go into detail on DC to DC converters in this presentation, but please see the separate presentation on buck and boost converters if you'd like to learn more about this topic. The final stage is the voltage regulator or controller. This section helps to maintain a constant output voltage as the load impedance and or the source voltage changes. It does this by monitoring the DC output voltage and comparing it to a stable reference voltage. Recall that the output voltage level is controlled by the duty cycle of the pulse signal present at the gate of the switcher. Therefore, if the regulator detects that the output is too high, it will decrease the duty cycle of the pulse signal. And if it detects that the output is too low, it will increase the duty cycle of the pulse signal. This is often referred to as pulse width modulation, since information is being conveyed by varying the width of the pulses. Note that this feedback signal is usually transmitted by means of an optocoupler or optoisolator for electrical isolation and safety reasons. Before we conclude this presentation, let's review the advantages and disadvantages of switching mode power supplies. Especially when compared to linear power supplies, switching mode power supplies are usually much smaller and lighter weight because the high switching frequency reduces the size of the transformer and capacitors. Switching mode power supplies are also much more efficient. A typical switching mode power supply can easily have an efficiency of 90% or more. And switching mode power supplies are usually much more flexible in terms of being able to operate at different input voltages and frequencies. The greatest disadvantage of these types of power supplies is that they're more complicated and thus also tend to be somewhat higher cost, both in terms of components and the resources needed to design, debug, and test them. Producing a high frequency pulse signal also can lead to EMI issues, namely higher levels of both conducted and radiated emissions, although significant improvement has been made in this area over the last few decades. Let's end with a brief summary. Switching mode power supplies are commonly used to convert AC to DC 
or to convert between different DC voltages. They're called switching mode power supplies because a semiconductor switch, typically a MOSFET, is used to chop a DC voltage into a high frequency pulse signal. This has two main advantages. First, higher frequencies reduce the required size of both the transformer and capacitors, especially compared to linear power supplies. And secondly, the output voltage can be controlled or regulated by varying the duty cycle of the pulse signal used to switch the transistor on and off. The transformers found in switching mode power supplies are used both to step down voltages and for electrical isolation or safety purposes. Capacitors, inductors, and diodes are used at various points and in various arrangements to both rectify and filter voltages. Although they're more complex than linear power supplies, switching mode power supplies offer substantial advantages over traditional linear power supplies and are very common in electrical and electronic devices. This concludes our presentation, Understanding Switching Mode Power Supplies. If you'd like to learn more about power-related topics, power measurement, and test and measurement solutions for power electronics, please see the links in the video description. Thanks for watching.